So here I am at the beginning of the process. Um, I've asked for questions on my process and I thought it'd be good if I showed you um, over a series of videos. So this is layer one. Um, I have my palette, which is made up of a series of yellows, pinks, black and white, and a green. I will actually list those so you can see exactly what I'm starting with. But really, at this point, um, I am not worried about palette. I'm just kind of wanting to create marks on the paper that I can respond to. I often will start with pencil because it's just a way of getting stuff on there that covers easily, that... Um, I can get into the swing of just being a little bit free before I get into paint. Um, I also really love the contrast of the light lines um, with the intense kind of paint lines. So you might see some of these peeking through at some point or you might not. Uh, but I hold the pen pencil quite lightly so that anything that I do create is quite loose. It's not exacting. So if I was to create a circle, it's going to be a very, very loose representation of a circle. And I will often repeat the same mark quite a bit. Whether or not that ends up in the final picture, I can't tell you at this point, but it's something that I enjoy doing, so I'll do more of it. Um, do I think about composition in these early layers? No, I don't. Um, I'm a graphic designer, so whether or not it naturally comes in, uh, it probably does, but it's not something that I'm consciously doing. Um, I'll often start a process with something that I love, and you will know if you follow me that I love fluoro pink. It just, um, it's one of those things that if I'm struggling to get into work, if I'm struggling to um, come into the studio, if I'm struggling to stay here or to want to get inspired, I start here because instantly it, I can respond to that. Like it just lights me up so much to see that color that I know I will spend the day here doing more too. Um, and you know, there won't probably be that much of it when I've um, finished with my layers today, but it's a cool place for me to start. I love combining uh, that fluoro pink of the acrylic paints with the ink. So I like the way the ink also, a bit like the pencil, it gives you this opportunity to cre create some really interesting shapes in a different way. Um, I also use this, these inks in the last process um, because they can really define some cool shapes right over the top of things. So right now I'm just going to very loosely put some stuff there that hold all the brushes quite lightly. I don't want perfect. I want mess. Uh, that's kind of my thing, is creating mess. I love it when the inks and the paints go quite light. So at this point, when they're all still a little bit wet, I'll be making this light color. I've got some on my, on my palette as I was working on one of the early layers for the other eight. If you notice my palette, it um, all the colors will start blending together to get some harmony between them. So uh, that's why I love working on these because when you get the colors working together, then you know that you're gonna get some nice harmony between them. And even then, um, I'll put the odd color on here that's not on the palette just to get some surprises um, because the palette may not be in this exact range when I finish. Um, I mean, it is approximately what I'm working with at the moment. So 
it may not change dramatically, but uh, oh, I just love that. Love those greeny, browny tones that I'm getting there. I'm gonna do that quite a bit on this one. That my that my you notice that I use this a lot because I like my planks to be quite fluidy when I'm working with them, and yet um, they're quite um, heavy bodied when I start out with them. You'll notice I do there's a lot of transparent paint that I'm using at the moment. I would say that I start off with quite transparent layers, and I bring in opaque layers when I'm covering up because you'll see that there's a, there will be a lot going on in these early layers and I won't want it all to stay but at this point um, I'm just having fun um, and so I kind of like seeing the pencil lines come through I like seeing the way that the paints blend together um, without hiding too much um, there's nothing much that I want to hide at this point. So and there's the oil pastels. I like the way that the oil pastels, um, sorry, the um, yeah, oil pastels reject the um, acrylic paint. So I put some in in these early layers that uh, will do things. In later layers. It'll be interesting to see what they do in later layers. Um, sometimes it's the simplicity of one mark that will change the way an entire painting will look. Uh, where do I want to go from here? I think where I want to go from here is I want some darker, some darker things going on. So I'm getting my black and I'm mixing it with the pink Cronacridone Magenta and Brilliant Magenta just so that it's got another, it's probably mixed in with quite a few other colors, but that's the primary colors that are in there. Um, so it gives this purpley black color, but it's really nice and contrasting. Um, I'm not caring too much about my shapes at the stage. I just want them to be a little bit. Uh, yeah, I got some of that other color on there, which I don't like. Um, free. I want them to feel free. Um, you know, I often think that, and I often call my paintings wild or wild gardens or wild gardens in my head or because that's how they feel. It feels like the sort of Freedom, freedom from having to have a certain rule, freedom from having to paint within the lines. Um, I think for most of the people that come and learn from me, this is what um, I give them permission to do. And that is just, in a way, make a mess, in a way, let go. And we can be so taught a lot um, in our early lives to not do that, to not create mess. So in some ways, I think my job <laughs> is to give permission, give permission to make a lot of mess and see what happens. Because I think that's when really good things happen. Just the way that that all combines, the way that these colors combine, it lights me up. It lights me up to create this wild kind of mess. Um, again, I want to come back to that darker color. With some of that magenta. Yum! Look at that. You might kind of concentrate it a bit more in an area. If you don't have a palette like these, and I'll often work on a couple, 
get them because that's when the colors can really blend together and you're getting just gorgeous greens and browns and pinks all working at the same time and you know even if you're using one brush I mean I will swap between but I often will kind of do quite a bit with one brush because you're getting all the different colors combining and then when you see them on this palette sorry on the um, canvas they look in harmony with each other they look really beautiful together oh that's really good it's some sort of like orangey color in there from the yellow that I've got in the palette that I really love. Probably getting to the end of this brush use. Although, you know, these brushes, these long ones can create so many different marks. Um, and I like creating similar marks in different ways. So I've made all those with that dark. Now it's kind of interesting to see what the light will do. is a makeup brush <laughs> uh, and I quite often use it to make um, I do it on big paintings to be honest a lot because they do create these just gorgeous random shapes I hope my intention for this video is for you to see how little I care at this point, how free I am, how I work across all four, just getting some stuff there that I can come back over the top of. Um, and you'll see the progression of these as I move through. And once I've basically got enough of them covered, I'll leave them to dry and I'll come back over the top of them.